Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Hey everybody, welcome to the QuiverCast, where we chat with surfers from all around the world, from all walks of life, and we get their story. Find us at www.thequivercast.com. I am Mike, your host. Let's get into the show. Hello everyone, this is Mike here with the QuiverCast. I'm stoked. I've been waiting for this interview for quite a while. We have Elizabeth Eddy here, who is a professional soccer player, but also just an all-around athlete. How are you doing, Elizabeth? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me, Mike. Stoked to be here. So let's start off in the beginning. You're a soccer player, but you're also a surfer. Correct. What passion came first? Um, honestly, surfing is probably my favorite thing since I learned to surf. <laughs> But I, then again, like to qualify, I was born in LA, we moved to Newport when I was five. And I didn't, like my first couple of years surfing was because my cousin would save all of his allowance and buy boards. And then we'd get all the cousins coming out on Sunday mornings. And I would paddle way past the break and sit out there for two hours, never catch a wave because three inches was too big. And then like after a couple of years, I eventually got over that fear and kind of like learned that I wasn't going to die. Like I thought I would die. So like, as I like got more into it, I like loved it. And I would say I love it most by far. So you really love surfing. So, yeah. And how, what do you feel about soccer? I also love soccer, but I would say surfing to me, something about surfing that's different than soccer is that it's you with nature and learning to like read it, understanding the math and physics and science behind it. I'm like becoming like, like going with nature versus like making your man-made thing with your little like white lines on the ground, rectangle on the end of the field. And I, like, I love soccer, but it's very much more of like a man-made thing, which I obviously appreciate. I love it enough to play it professionally for nine years and I still love playing. Um, and the dynamic's really different too. Cause like if you're playing pro soccer, like I'm in like in season for 10 months, you're under contract. You're not supposed to do a lot of things. It's a huge sacrifice where surfing's like, like you're almost like, it's like being playful in the ocean, which I'm like, this is the best thing ever. Uh, where you're like that, I think like there's so much joy I have from surfing where soccer can have joy, but soccer is like really demanding in other ways. Like you are like one of 11 on the field. You're one of 26 on a roster. You have a staff, you have a coaching staff, you have ownership. Like there's like a lot that goes into it, which is like a very different ordeal. Like where it's like an, it's like an 80 person business to like a one, maybe like you have a coach or a manager for professional surfing. So it's just really different. I like both are cool. So I've never, obviously never surfed professionally, but soccer professionally is like awesome, but like gnarly. So what I'm hearing is one is structured and the other one's kind of, you're free. Yeah, m more free. I still think professional surfing is very structured, I'd say, and to compete is always structured. But yeah, th this individual sport versus team sport is a pretty big difference. Huge, yeah. I, I mean, I guess tennis versus, or golf versus baseball or soccer or football or whatever. Yeah, yeah. a pretty big difference there. And how do you find your 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 spot on the soccer team get that position does that like make sense contract to play pro like how does it happen well not just pro but just let's start let's start way back when you first started playing soccer honestly my family's not a huge fan of soccer like they don't really watch like if i go downstairs and try to watch it on tv and my two brothers come down they're like it's 2v1 we don't want to watch soccer like i like don't I get to watch soccer at home my sister would be like yeah it's fine but my dad I think it was either neighbors on the block was like, Hey, let's coach our girls in under fives, like ABSO. And we were like the yellow bumblebees. And so again, it was like very like community culture. Like it's just kind of what you did. You played like youth soccer in America, rec league. It's like your dad did never played soccer. Like he's a water polo player and a sailor. Like he was like, Oh, it's like right. there's six players in water polo at five years old. There's six players in soccer, but I can do it. And he, I mean, he's very strategic and very like high EQ. So he was very good at coaching, but like, it definitely was not like the soccer culture that like I hadn't played pro for nine years. Like most people's families are very like into soccer. Yes. Around the world, I think soccer is treated different than in America. Yes. And I will say I love that where I've traveled in actually quite a bit. And I'm like, this is so epic. We're like, it's almost like you're well received internationally better than in your own home country based on just. Yeah. 
Yeah. And soccer in America is growing yes. tremendously, I think. Every year it's getting bigger and bigger and, and it's more important. But it's still not football or baseball yet. But I think the day's coming. Yeah, I do. I mean, the men's definitely getting more invested. For women, I think it's a bit of a different story where I feel like for women, women's soccer is probably like the biggest sport where like a lot of women play. There's like an opportunity to play professionally and a lot of good athletes in America that are going to play soccer where in men's your best athletes are probably playing football, basketball, baseball. And then you're like next year of athletes who play soccer unless they're like international <laughs> families, which happens like for people who. Yeah, I mean, America's so big. We're about to get there for the Mets side, not here. And we don't really have a, a brand or style of soccer in America where you go to Europe, like Italy has a style, England has a style, Spain has a style. Really? And like Japan has a style. Like America's like work hard. As a soccer player, you also have this this passion or this love for surfing. How do you divide the time um, as you're growing up? It worked out really well where I was like out surf team in high school and then – that's like early morning and first period. And we have block schedule shots every other day and you have contests and stuff, which also was in the morning. Cause I never really, I don't think I even did one surf contest outside of high school surfing. Like I just okay. really didn't have time for it where soccer was like, I mean, you have training multiple times after school, you travel all over in the weekends. Like I think my junior and senior in high school, I had made the youth national team. So in total junior year, I missed three months of school, senior year, I missed three months of school just for like international travel for like the youth national team. So like I wow. was very not, involved in like other things just based on time and like, opp like opportunities came and it was like you say yes or you don't and by saying yes i missed out on a lot which i was happy to do well you missed out on a lot but you also got a lot yeah. you got to yeah but i like travel yeah, internationally totally i mean i loved it we like i think we got a silver medal in the u17 world cup we did lose to north korea which that's not a good thing oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i just i missed the cup for the 20s at the end i was with the team for a year and a half and then the last couple months they were like oh we're going in a different direction but like it was really fun I, that was i was playing up like two years i think i was like 18 playing with the u20s it was great is that a different uh, athlete you're dealing with um that was more just like age so like i was like 18 in high school and the u20s includes like a lot of college girls like 20 yeah. year olds and the coach was the UCLA coach and I was committed to USC and would go to camp every month. And I think I did well at the end. She was like, you can't have your best camp last camp. And I was like, I understand sports. It's subjective. When you chose to do a team sport, you subject, I subjected myself to the team environment. So like you got to choose. If she wasn't yeah. happy. I wouldn't decommit from USC though. Going backwards. So you have this morning surf life total. Go to class, go to soccer, go to class and then do soccer. Yeah. Most of Is there days that you ever were able to like ditch soccer practice because it's like Santa Ana's oh, or something? Oh, no, that's zero. It. Like soccer was zero. Priority. Like, and I feel like how I was raised, like my parents were pretty much like, if you want to do something, you have to commit to it. And yeah, you okay. can do other things. But like, as long as that is like, like for soccer, as long as you do like everything that you know you can do to be the best you can, then you can do whatever else you want. But like, you have to keep your priorities straight. So I like never, I never miss soccer for surfing. Okay. That's for sure. Was that hard for you? Um, I would say like, no, because I was like, like, I, that's the other part. Like I'm pretty like goal oriented. And if I have a goal, I'm like, yeah, I'll sacrifice whatever. Like I, okay. I'd say I love the goal of playing soccer enough to like not surf. Cause so to me, surfing was like for fun and like, okay. And in my head, I was also like, I can, you can always compete in surfing at any age. There's my opinion where I'm like, you don't need anybody else. Like soccer is like a big system where like surfing again, like when you want, you can go choose to be and like people say choose to not compete on the tour or on like at the QS series or whatever, whenever they want. And I'm like, there's a lot more flexibility I'd say there, which I knew. So I was like, yeah. oh, what makes more sense? Put your time into soccer. It's harder on your body. It's harder on every other aspect of your life. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that most professional surfers, maybe now it's different, but in general, are they as much of an athlete as like a team sport uh, athlete, uh, as a team sport athlete, um, I would say like it's becoming much more like professional, and I think it's really, yeah. I think it's really good. I know that purists surfers are like this is horrible, so like that's yeah, a whole different debate. Um, but like if you're gonna do a sports side of it, like do the sports side, like it's like playing pickup soccer or like play professional soccer. Like what do you want to do? Like there's room for all of it in my opinion. But I do think that it's getting very competitive. I still think no matter what you do, an individual performance based sport like 
is a almost a completely different thing than like basketball, baseball, soccer, it is. hockey, like uh, team sport. It, it's like you need like like even just scheduling and like management and investment. And I think team sports is really hard from like even an ownership standpoint because they're just making like tons of massive bets on what they think of the future is going to be, how long do this person contract? And then we made a contract to them. Oh, they're not playing well. Can we bench them? When do we bench them? And is it even not the owner's choice? It's like, I mean, there's like a lot of moving factors where surfing. It's like, if you're good enough, it's like simpler, I'd say. If you yes. win the contest, you go to the next level. Granted, you're performing for judges back to subjectivity. So like, you're going to get it at some point. Like the pure sports, I'd say, are like swimming and track. There's a finish line. Yeah, like that's kind of all you're gonna get if you want, and then maybe fighting, like you knock them out or you didn't, like that's kind of. But you still get judged if you don't knock them yeah. out. So like, but you do have a little like, control. Like, I guarantee not. I hope we. I'm hoping nobody's hoping to knock people out. Maybe they are. I don't really follow up fighting that much. But like, those are the few sports that it's like as few as you can get. Where like the rest of it's. There's a, humans operating group think more often than is helpful in my opinion, and so okay. what the. A lot of people's opinions factor into the head coach's choice or the judge's choice. Yeah. Which allows okay. that to compete at the next level. So in your life as a young lady and, and getting older as a teenager, surfing is kind of your escape, it sounds totally like. Totally is my like outlet. Like I'm so happy. I'll go out when it's two feet. I'll go out if it's ten feet. I'm like, I'm just stoked to be here. If it's ten feet, I have to be a little more like locked in like don't take off too deep. Like I, I, I very much can't be getting hurt surfing, which I thankfully haven't. At least in high school, I did get hurt. Actually, I did miss some soccer in high school because of the surf injury that I had. Which that really? was, yeah, that was stupid, but it happened. I got Clyde inside what on the on Fortieth Street. My friends have a house on Forty First, so we would surf there a ton in the mornings, and we went one morning. I think it was before like church or something on a Sunday. And it was me and my best friends and then our other friend's dad and like he was sleeping in because he lives there. And so we're yeah. out and there's a huge set came in out the back and I like duck I think I like ditched my board. Like sometimes okay. I'm scared. I'm like, oh, I'm just swimming down. So I'm swimming down. Yeah. I like come yeah. up and then there's like my board's like dead deep under the, the white water. And then I'm like, oh, wow. I can't wait for this to surface. So I start swimming towards the next set. And then oh. I'm about to dive down. So I put my feet up and then the board shoots back and the skag stabs the arch my foot. And oh. at this point, I'm like, oh, that hurt. But, like, okay, I'm trying to live here. So, like, I do that. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I'm the boy. I'm like, I'm like, I'm set. Like, we're, we're in the clear. And then I'm standing like, man, what's hurting? That's weird. So then I catch the next wave. I don't know, like, like head high. And I, yeah. like, just, I'm like, okay, I'm sure right, straight. I, like, jump to pop up. My right foot lands. My left, as my left foot lands, like, at the same time, hits the stomp pad. I'm like, ow. And I, like, go on one foot. And then I, like, wobble for, like, I don't know, four seconds, fall. Maybe two seconds. And I had... Like, I feel like there's a golf ball size on my foot. So then I start walking in the beach, like limping really bad. And the lifeguards, like, I don't know why lifeguards were there, but lifeguards were like, I was like, told my friends to get the lifeguards, got the lifeguards. They came down and they're like, oh, like you, you have like a lot of blood and like, it's white, like your tendons, like you need to like help. So then like they, the de- like our friend's dad and my other friend, like got me in the car, shattered me, took me straight to the ER. They like did one stitch and like, we're like, oh, okay. Ooh got lucky you missed your like tendons nine millimeters that would have caused drop toe which would have like really affected your art career and then i think i was out for like a week or two but like wow. other than that like it wasn't like i chose surfing over soccer it was like i'm paying the penalty for a poor choice surfing wow so you you make the national team as a as in, in high school right for soccer yeah, like the, the, you guys do you do pretty good right yeah yeah, it was great. I mean, it was like a great life experience. Really cool. Live in New Zealand. It was in New Zealand for like a month. It was insane. Are your friends driving by or, or running by you at soccer practice, teasing you that the waves are good and you're working? No, sweating because like, well, our, so that's the other thing. We live in Newport, but the soccer training was in like uh, Samuel Capistrano. So like, no, okay. none of my friends would drive. Like, no one wants to drive down there. If like, no, go to city to city in SoCal, they're just like, I love my city, and they stay there. So like, right. nobody was like even like bothered like, around uh, yeah they didn't have the proximity let alone the effort to like go be annoying <laughs> okay so you're you're working your way up this national international level of soccer yeah and you're going to go to you're thinking about going to college right yeah and i think for soccer is interesting like at least my era of recruiting like by my junior year i was committed to college and like and then because i made the youth national team around that time i had the chance to kind of go wherever i wanted and this would be paid for mostly yeah. so that was like a really cool like opportunity and and then again back to subjectivity for like, what do you think makes you special and i'm like i don't know like i really have fun competing and i like love 
being challenged. And I like really, I joined like a really good club team when I was 14, like at the beginning of high school. And I was like, I love being on this team because I'm the worst one. And I was so genuine about that. And people were like, that's not a great attitude. I'm, no, everyone around me is better. I have a chance to like, compete and grow and learn. Okay. I've always had that like mindset where every single second of every single day, you have a chance to improve and like learn and like, just refine all the skills that you have or whatever skills you do have. That thought process and like perspective, I think, has allowed me to do a lot of unique things and play different sports that, that like, our people are like, how'd you, like I, I walked on the cross team in college and they, it was great. Like they helped, they covered my grad school and they, it was fantastic. So, and they split a scholarship for the soccer team, like, because I was like, oh, I can learn. Yeah, it was really fun. So, do you think you're a natural born athlete? Yeah. Or do you have to work hard? You know? I think you yeah. always have to work hard no matter what you okay. have, but especially yeah. if you want to compete and if you're in a team in sport, I would say, I think the team sport has a lot of this weird, these are the, they, they believe like these are the actions to take to be the best. And then if you choose different actions, which could help you be the best, they're going to like judge you and hold it against you. Where in individual sports, like I can do whatever the heck I want and find whatever alternative strategies to make myself better. And I think that part was, has been tricky for me in the pros. Uh, but aside from that, I think I definitely was like born with a lot of like, to some degree, like this are the gifts you've been given. And then I would definitely would say I've worked hard to develop them. Right. I think it's definitely both, but I do think there's some people that like aren't that athletic that can also play at the highest level because they're like lean into other skills, but they have like different skill sets, more maybe like tactical awareness level, but they still have to be athletic enough. I'd say you get on USC and how, how's that? How, how do you, how's the soccer? How's lacrosse? Like that's such a, a foreign. I have no clue what it is in lacrosse. Yeah. I, um, so I go to the USC, um, <laughs> My first semester, so soccer is a fall sport. So you get like yes. school starts what August. We got there like July or something. So it's like mm -hmm. you're just there with the team. You're running. You're doing preseason. It's all hard and scary and all this stuff. And I would say in that first semester, we we went to the tournament and we lost to Notre Dame that year. We won the championship. So it was early wow. in the tournament, but like it was like you lost to the best team. So it's like that's like somewhat salvageable. <laughs> but that was like if USC is like a school that's like we are excellent, and if we're not excellent, like of course not acceptable. So. I personally like really enjoy the environment, that mentality, because I think it pushes you and you grow a lot. Whether or not you make it, I'm like, find a way kind of thing. But also mm -hmm. like then they like it, the world's not going to end if you're not the best in the world. Granted, as you like should keep striving to be my opinion, but that's a whole different topic. Um, USC, I really enjoyed it. That first semester, I was like, I think I had like felt every emotion you could ever possibly feel in every week. Like I'm crying, I'm happy. I mean, it's just like, it's just intense because it's a new experience you're living on your own. Um, and then the next three years soccer wise, we didn't even make the tournament we would self-sabotage our coach was very controlling we didn't work out we didn't it was not good together like him and i or like with the team i think he's actually part of the varsity blues college scandal so like he wasn't a great guy to oh, begin with. Wow. so like once he like got fired i think a week after my senior game um and then he got like i guess indicted with that whole thing it was just a lot of like not great things. And I think as a coach, I think coaching is very hard. First of all, like I think there's so many different skill sets as a human. You need not only the sport knowledge, it's like steps one through three. You need like four through 10 have to be like organizational, <laughs> communicational, like conciseness, confidence, like interpersonal skills. Like, like you have to like really be like a very skilled human to lead well a team as a head coach. And I think he had some really good skill sets and then he had some not great skill sets. He knew the game. He just had a hard time with some like a personal stuff. I'd say like communication management and then like trusting people thing. But yeah, he's, I don't know if he's in jail, but he's indicted. Is that the right word? <laughs> yeah. I guess. And then like, wow. but, but I will say like when I was there, like, it was just, yeah, interesting things. I was, so, we didn't get along so well that like I really was like, I need to do things outside of soccer because this is not fun. And my friends at like Stanford and UCLA would be like, hey, Liz, there's a full ride for you. You have transfer. And I was like, don't talk to me. I'm emotionally unstable. And so then I was like, because like, I don't need to, and I call my dad, my dad, like, oh, was like, no, you don't like finish what you started. And I'm like, okay. And like, and he's like, do you want to, like, you're probably going to get your husband to college. Like, what, like, do you really, like, it was just like, what's the best advice and I, I will say i still think my dad was right and i'm glad that i was like advised to stay in my state um, but like because of all that like junior year I, or sophomore year during a sorority i like I ended up moving a house by my like senior year end of junior year I was in dg absolutely loved it by my junior year i ended up walking on the lacrosse team again like more to just have like different life experiences because like soccer like i did the best i could but i couldn't really control or change it if i wasn't going to transfer it's, you need, it's four hours your day like find a way to enjoy the other 18 hours because or 20 hours because like life's short and don't let your rough situation in soccer that's paying for things 
like ruin your life. Yeah. That was like, I'd say like a really good growing as a human challenge. Yeah. And then I joined the lacrosse team at the end of my junior year, which was super fun. Loved it. Um, I was, because I'm like pretty athletic, I was able to help the team as like a face fighter. So I'd guard the other team's best player and like, like if you do your job and shut them down, we win games. If you don't, we'll lose games. I'm like, great. Good thing. I can't catch and throw, but I can help with competitiveness. And what we want to talk <laughs> So like, I enjoyed doing that a lot. And then my senior, I got drafted and then my lacrosse coach was, well, she was not very happy. She was like, why did you enter the draft? And I'm like, because I don't play for soccer. She's like, well, you can't leave. And I'm like, I told them if they're going to draft me, I'm not coming until lacrosse is over. So like, don't worry, recovery. And she's like, oh, okay. I was like, great. Wow. Okay. So you get in the draft. It's called the NWSL, National Women's Soccer. National Women's Soccer. And you get drafted, right? Yeah. So what team do you on? Um, I got drafted to Sky Blue, which is a team like in New Jersey, New York area. Yep. And yep. then, so I was there. I get drafted. I fly out to Jersey. I'm there for like two days. A lacrosse coach from SC calls and says, hey, like come back for grad school. Like we want you to play another year. And I was like, great. So I go back. Um, they cover grad school. It was awesome. At the time, also my boyfriend's in school still. And I was like, yeah, this is okay. better. Like versus being far for a year, like we can be together yeah. for another year. And then I like got to do grad school, played lacrosse. And then while I was playing, the team in Sky Blue traded my rights to the team in, what, in upstate New York called Western New York Flash. So then I ended up going there when lacrosse ended, but I went like part way into season. So I like played like second half, second three quarters. I don't really know the details, but like a little more than half, not the full season. Um, and I think I was like super sub and like second leading goal scorer that year. I was like a forward or a winger. And then the next year, and we were really bad that year. I think, I don't know if we were last, but we were bad. The next year, <laughs> a coach came in and he was like a coach at Portland. Who's, his name is Paul Riley. And then he comes his first year coach 2016 at Washington York Flash. He's like, hey, I need you to play right back. We don't have right back. And I was like, I want to play forward. He's like, yeah, well, you won't start. Do you want to start it right back? I was like, okay, fine, I'll start. So then I played right back all year. We went from the worst team and projected to think it'd be the worst to like we won the whole championship that year, played every game. Brad. Really fun, great life experience. And then our owner was like, okay, I'm going to sell you guys. So then he sold our whole team, staff, players, everything together to North Carolina and like Cary, Raleigh area. So then we like moved there and I was there for two and a half years. And there we like, continued winning and it was like with regular season to win a championship win the international champions cup where we played like leon and psg and man city and then we like would sometimes lose in one of the top rounds but then we always get to the final so it was really fun for like three or four years um i got hurt a lot those years in north carolina so i didn't play that much um i had to do a lot of maturing and like sleep eight hours a night and stretch most days you train like that's all i had to learn it was very hard for me to learn that but i've learned that and i'm still playing which is like success because in that time of two years i heard a lot i went to my brother i was like hey parker like should I like retire? Like, it's just not working. It's like, do you love soccer still? And I was like, yeah. He's like, then literally just figure out how to sleep and stretch. It's not that hard. And I was like, okay. Like, so like, yeah. just, like I needed like somebody who knew me well enough to like speak directly to me and be like, call me out. on like when I was like not refusing to take responsibility of it. And I was like, no, you have control of this. It's your fault. You're hurt. Like find a way to be healthy. So that was like a good growing phase as well. And then I asked to get treated and then I went to back to sky blue which then rebranded to Gotham and moved up north. So we played like Red Bull Arena. And I was there for like three years-ish, two and a half years, three years. When I was on loan in Australia, 2021, yeah. uh, New York called me and I was like, hey, we're training you to Houston. And I was like, I want to be Houston. Like, that's the last, t like, it's miserable. It's so hot. It's just, there's no service. It's just not great. And then I went to Houston when I came from Australia. And it was actually a really a great experience. But we had three coaches in the, like, last year, three coaches in the year we, I was there. And it was just like kind of a mess. And then this year they like cut me and then now I'm on training with a spirit and hopefully we'll, or I will sign with them in 10 days. Women's soccer. Is it going in the positive direction now? Um, I would see there's like a couple aspects to that question. I would say um, from an opportunity standpoint and a financial standpoint and a like growing the fan base standpoint. Yes, it's going in a positive direction. Yeah. Basically I think women's soccer is going in a great direction for opportunity. And there's like a lot of like investment and it's like, the competitive level is getting higher and there's more international players coming and there's just more money in the game and like you're getting more fans at every game which is super cool and i'm like stoked to be a part of that that was part of my question is is like is the fan base growing is women's soccer yeah i would at least here in dc like we're at this i mean the stadium's in dc in navy yard area which is like a really good location but i think it seats twenty thousand, and they said we're averaging ten thousand a game and like okay we're getting like sometimes 12, 13, maybe 14,000. And like, they're loud, they're hyped. It's like pretty fun. Like it's a pretty like good environment. Um, I don't know what the boys average, but like 
for considering this is the first year they've had every home game in Audi Field, like that's a really good sign because you can just grow from there. Versus the male soccer, I guess, since you brought it up, is it growing as fast? Um, they, you think? So they're, I think their league's over 30 years old and ours is like 11 years old. So yeah. I think theirs has grown a ton. Okay. I think that it's with Messi signing or TM Miami, whatever, three, a week ago, like that yeah. really changes the dynamic for every single MLS team. Like it's just everybody wants to go see Messi play, which like increases everybody's like value, which is really cool. So that I think, I think will help it grow in every single city, especially every single time Messi's team plays them. So with international players, are there more and more coming to America? Uh, for the women's side or the men's side? Yeah, both. Either. Or... Yeah, I would say yes, because I also think still a lot of like international people, specifically soccer players, want to end their career in America because America is like a, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of freedom in America and a lot of the countries don't have freedom or opportunity, at least at the scale okay. of America does. When you played internationally, what did you learn soccer wise? Um, I would say, so my first uh, off season, I played on loan in Japan and that I learned probably the most soccer wise. Um, Cause I would say like, from my perspective for one soccer, America's the best at like strength and speed and like competitiveness. Japan's the best at like technical and tactical. And so I was like, Ooh, I want to go to Japan specifically cause they had just won the world cup. And I was like, I want to learn more about the technical and tactical side from the best in the world at that. So I did that for like three months or so. And a girl on my team was up for the ball and deer, which is best player in the world that year. So I like learned so much. It was like such a great, like life shaping experience about soccer. But I also like grew a lot as a person where I realized like, holy cow, like everything I thought that was like important in life was like social construct like in America where like this other culture works totally fine on its own, but like does not value the same things at all. And that was like really healthy to see. And then kind of came, made me realize like, okay, like what do I believe is true? And then I was like, all right, I believe the Bible is true. Everything outside of this, like, We'll, work, we'll rework kind of the working model that I was like living life through. Interesting. Yeah, it was really, I loved it. Really hard, very alone and isolating because like I didn't speak Japanese. And I was going to ask you that too. Yeah, like language. English. I mean, they would Google Translate when there was Wi Fi. Like it was pretty gnarly. Yeah. So did you feel like a loner? So, I mean, yeah. Like you're almost a loner, but also like they like <laughs> think you're really cool because you're like the American and like they're like, yeah. they're like very homogeneous in Japan. So like they don't see foreigners often. And that wasn't in like a big city. So, it was like an anomaly. So you're like, wow. people like you and also you like, can't speak to them. Yes. So in Japan, did you surf? Uh, our ways. I wanted to. I looked up a lot of things I never got to. And I was only there for three months. So like I would have one day a week and I definitely would go on adventures and stuff. But we were not okay. that close to the beach either. So I did not. Oh, okay. It's an island though. It is an island. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were right in the Big island, like two hours either way to get to the beach. And I was like. Yeah. Totally get yeah. So then. You, you go back to America, play, but then you go to um, Australia and get to play. How was that? Um, I loved it. That was my favorite place by far. I was in Newcastle, which is like a smaller town, two hours north of Sydney. Um, I surfed, I surfed, wow. I surfed yeah, one to four times a day if the waves were surfable. Lived in my bikini, played soccer every day. I was like, this is the perfect lifestyle. I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah. So they're more closer than Japan culturally to us a lot well yes. they're almost the same probably yes a lot more similar which again from like a southern california surf culture it was very similar and i very much enjoyed that and i would say it was the first time i've gone to like live on my own as an adult and with the freedom to surf a lot in a pro- like a location that had the proximity but now like this is the greatest thing ever so in your contract or anything it didn't say you have to like no surfing or whatever yeah. like, be safe i guess yeah, no they, i mean they definitely I, i'm sure they had that in there but I just kind of ignored it. Yeah. I like, well, I, so this is what I also believe. Again, women's soccer is like not big enough yet to like justify, in my opinion, not doing these things as long as you don't okay. get hurt. So then in my theory, I was like, well, if I'm, if I'm tr- kind of training this from when I was growing up, like I'm good enough to not get hurt and I'll just choose yeah. to take risky decisions. And I would say I've done that pretty well, like in all sports yeah. athletic soccer. So like, I've just said, just be smart about it, but like, definitely don't limit yourself. Cause like, if it brings you a lot of joy, like don't sit in your room and stare at the wall because you're so scared you might get hurt. Like, I think living in fear is the worst thing anyone could do ever. Yeah. That could that be more damaging, but, and also you're doing something healthy. It's, it's, it is an exercise. Yeah, it's like, and it's like exercise to cool down. The water's cold. It's an ice bath. Like it's everything. Right. You, we're moving. And you're enjoying your. Yeah. If you're happy, you're like, getting, like you're, you're full of joy. I'm like, this is great. Were there any other girl surfers? Um, you, you made friends with? Oh, one of my friends um, from New Zealand, Rosie White, she played in New Zealand last year, she played at UCLA. And then we've played in the league against each other a lot. But we would surf, we surfed together in Newport one time. She's super cool. 
Um, I would say mm-hmm. like international, some like you know, some of the Australian international surf. A lot of them don't, which is kind of shocking slash surprising. Um, yeah, no, I, I not very many soccer players surf. Wow, and I think soccer okay. is a sport that's like it's like more like easy accessible to everyone, so you don't get yeah. like people that are like born by the beach or yeah, and that's pretty much it. You have to be born by the beach to surf, and that's a huge barrier. Kinda. I mean, back in yeah. like when I was playing in youth, like they didn't really have wave pools. Right. So, okay. like, so you did not, were you not born by the beach into a beach surf culture like you did. And I guess on my club team growing up, a lot of girls surfed. Like, we okay. would go, like, have like cookouts at Doheny and surf on like a Friday afternoon. The dads would grow. Yeah, right. It was really fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. In Australia, also, how did the uh, other surfers treat you being an American? Were they stoked? Oh, uh, yeah. I think the Australian American uh, rela- international relations are very strong. Where like they were like pretty happy to like meet an American like learn about why they're there and then they'd come to like our games and like support, which was super cool. Um, yeah. It's just it's really small per capita. Like they're like 10 million or 21 million people. So it's just in the whole country spread out and it's, yeah, it's spread yeah. out, but it's just like America is 350 million. So you're like economies of scale, like just doesn't equate simply yes. in like the like competition level. So like then the level of excellence is only like people compete to get better. And if there's just less people competing, you won't get pushed as hard unless you go international. So like they're across right. the border, like not as um, just don't have the volume to force them to grow. It's kind of like the diamonds thing, like diamonds, you get made by pressure and the more pressure, like the better they get. Okay. So you kind of need that. That makes sense. And then you were talking about wave pool. So you've surfed a wave pool. What are your thoughts on wave pools? Um, I, I love it. I surfed the one in Waco, Texas a bunch and yep. I thought it was amazing to get like eight perfect rights and eight perfect lefts, like really lets you try to perfect and work on like the skills of like bottom turns, timing, like snaps off the top, getting barreled, getting airs. Like I'm like, that is like, so if I was to ever like pursue surfing, I would be like, I want to go spend like three to six months out of wave pool to just like work on the technical pieces of it. And like also study different breaks that I'd ever have to go to. So that like I had, that would be like, <laughs> like, like I would approach you very soccer. Like it, I was just, you would go it as an athlete. But yeah, like this is the systematic way to do it. And like I'll check the boxes and I will force myself to go through this and then I will be good enough to do it. I feel like I like I like wouldn't choose to pursue it unless I was like, this is the plan, it's clear, here's the goal, how it's gonna be. And then like just go ball out, have some fun. Yeah. So how far was the drive to wake up from Houston? A couple hours? Either two and a half or three and a half hours. Like and I would literally okay. drive there, surf for an hour, drive back. Like I was crazy. A and on practice days. Like we got out like one, my team is like, What are you doing? I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go surf for like no way. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, You said you want to come, do you wanna come for like no way I have to sleep, I have to rest all day. And that's the other thing, like soccer is like I don't know if it's like they convince us, but also maybe people have low energy. Like I don't really have low energy, but like they're like, Oh, you gotta rest, like don't get in the sun, don't get too tired, like make sure you're not overworked. And I'm like, I need to do things, like I'm like bored. Yeah. <laughs> but then my, my dad was good I'm like boring people are bored so don't be bored I'm like okay well then I just need to like do things and like stimulate my brain and, and like like I operate better with like more things happening what about surfing like uh, Galveston or anything like that yeah. right that way? I, we went to the beach and I was like what I've done a lot when I go with my soccer teammates or like non-surfers we'll like show up at a beach and then I'll like find somebody on the beach of the board and ask to borrow and they usually let me which is great yeah but it's super rad but the waves were so bad and the water was so oily that it was like no one even had a surfboard. And I was like, okay, this isn't happening. I did want to do the, yeah. the tanker thing. Like they take a boat out and you like surf the tanker. But like the season wasn't right. And like, they're like, yeah, you could come out and there might be no waves to catch. And I was like, wait, so I'm going to pay a bunch of money, spend six hours on a boat and like not even get to do the thing that we were trying to do. Oh, you actually, there's like tours to go do that? Yeah, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, like you can pay somebody to get on a boat to go, like a, probably a Boston Whale or something to go out for like six hours and like wait by like the shallow reef for like, if tankers go by, you can catch the wave. And then you really? Go by and they like scoop you up and you can kind of like yeah. up it. If the, I know what it is, yeah. but I didn't know you paid. Yeah. Whoa. Well, actually, like meet people that have boats. I don't know. Like I'm over there Googling and trying to reach out and I'm like, this is like almost not like, it didn't seem like it was happening that much, I'd say. Yeah. Like that it was okay. cool. So we probably did it a few, two or three times and then like made cool stories about it and then didn't do it that much. It seems, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> you're an athlete. So you're probably in better health than most humans, most surfers probably, unless they're professional or whatever. Yeah, and, the, and even yeah, then you're probably healthier. Yeah, and the lifestyle of soccer is like, you can't like, like you can't be really, like you can't really, you can party a little bit, but like you're, you're a pretty like seriously treating yeah. your body. I mean, they're, we check like, 
every morning we like fill out an app like how was your sleep what color is your pee like what muscles feel tired and then like wow. they're like we have nutritionists that like here's your specific like supplements here's your diet like, they and here how much water like they're like it is like professional <laughs> just like wow yeah and like surfing like i don't think pro surfing is like that like a few, yeah. a few athletes will be like i want that type of professionalness but most can't be bothered yeah maybe kelly slater yeah i mean and like he seems like that I kind of like type. italo is that how you say his name italo who oh like, italo, yeah. from like a good surfer to like <laughs> i want to be a beast athlete and get fit and stuff and yeah. i was like well then you have to work hard to get there yeah but that kind of i mean okay yeah, so let's talk that. about him and being an athlete i think yeah. too much muscle is almost not good. Do you think he even gained muscle though, or he just like lost? Balance? Oh yeah, did you see how buff he I mean, is? He's buff, but he's not like huge. Like I, I feel like he's like shredded, but he's not like, like I think he was similar probably strength. He just lost the fat he had. Maybe because he's okay. like a, a tinier frame, and he's not like overly big. Yeah, he's not. But he's he's, he's really I mean, shredded. He's, but he's just like yeah. and then to be shredded like that. Usually you're like under eating calories, which like is not that fun. But if you want to look okay. a certain way, like you can do it. Like one uh, one of the doctors I work with. Or like body work specialist was like, here's the triangle. You have like aesthetic, you have health, and then you have performance. For for like the body, like you gotta pick one and do it. Like if you can oh, really? like you like you you can't really you're cutting corners if you try to do multiple of those goals. Like they don't really go hand in hand. Okay. But, yeah, I mean I don't know. Italo is a perfect example. He looks like a, a true more legit athlete. Yeah. Than some of the other guys, but I don't know if it's helped him out. He's not doing too well. And I feel like he was probably more free when he surfed really well. And then yeah. when you get really into like certain types of training, you're not as free. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say, have you surfed a contest just during high school? Did you do any yeah, contests I after? Did con oh, I did like, I think one or two in college for like the USC surf okay. team. Not. Oh yeah. Why didn't you join the USC surf I team? I did. I, I joined it, oh. but like never could go to contests. Like it worked out like once or twice. Uh, like yeah. Like I soccer and done lacrosse. Like it was kind of like the team sports just took over. Um, but I think I did one or two. I don't think I did that well. I can't remember. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That would have been, you would have been a, a three, three sports there. Yeah. Or you were three. I mean, yeah, I, I was, I would say it was because it's like a club team. So it's kind of like, yes, it's not a real sport. I mean, it's a real sport. It's just like not the amount of investment Training. and like intensity that other people seem to care a lot. Like it was more for fun. Okay. I think well, back to my question, I think was, have you ever got yourself in like a heavy situation where it's like, oh shit, it's 10 foot out here. I thought it was smaller or um, gnarlier than I thought. Yeah. One time I was, it was winter and I was at like at pipe in North shore with some friends <laughs> and my friend, like, this is like in soccer. Like, I mean, this is my pro soccer career. So I'm like, I can't be like going to the peak and like battling it out, let alone like, yeah. I'm not ex like, I, that's, I'm not there. I would say yeah. like, at one point, like, that'd be cool. But like, we're not there. And my buddy, like, he's, like, surf big waves all over the world. So he's, like, literally not battling. He Charging. goes to the peak and, like, is better than everybody else at the peak and just, like, stands up, full barrels, like, yeah, it's sick. And I'm, like, out, out the shoulder, like, I don't know, 30 feet. Yeah. like, not catch it. Like, I'm waiting for, like, the seven or eight foot or six to eight foot set, not set to, like. Which is still huge. Still huge, but it's, like, also a <laughs> reef, so it's kind of. So I'm, like, I'm happy to surf here versus, like, here. Right. And he's, like. Come on, does it come with me? Let's go sit at the top. And I'm like, Connor, no, like I can't be getting hurt. Like I like maybe in the future, like today, I'm just happy I'm out here and I'm gonna catch something. It's gonna be great. So like I would yeah. say, like I, but I also went out there knowing it was like big. So I was like, okay, it's I like I like enjoy like pushing myself and be like, oh, I'm scared, but like still go do it. So like I was like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna catch at least one wave. That's like my goal, and then I'll go do that. So like I think that's like it's kind of this like fun challenge against myself. And I think surfing always has that, which I like really enjoy where like other things can like get like not that challenging or not as fun. Cause there's no, like, I don't know, like risk involved, less risk involved. Well, paddling on a pipe is legit to take your life. Yeah. It's like, it, 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 it really could to the rock, like your next, like your jugular is squirting, but like you're done. Like, and, <laughs> right. Like, no, it's not, true. like that's a reality. And then it, so it's like for me, like the more I go out there and catch one wave, the more I'll like learn it. Cause like, if you think if you know what you're doing enough, you can then go take off wherever you want. But like, I need reps out there just being in the water, learning and observing it. Like even when I play like AYSO, like under five soccer, my mom's like, you were the weirdest kid. You didn't even go in the beehive, but you weren't making daisy necklaces. You'd stand outside of the beehive, the pack of people running. And then you'd like dart in, take the ball and score. And then you'd like stay away again. Like I, I'm a big, like my, when I'm learning something, I'm like, let me observe a million times. So I yeah. get a mental picture and then I'll go execute it. So like, that's just kind of how I process. And yeah, I've only, that's smart. I've only served five, like three times 
I'm the winner and it's been fun, but like, I'm always like, okay, this is like on the edge of my range. That's when we've been called for yeah. out. I'm going to sit in a place where I won't get killed and I'm going to like just learn as much as I can. So that's been kind of, yeah. I think more people should take that advice actually in surfing. Well, I, I also just, yeah. Cause I'm like, oh, like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, full send, like send it. But I'm also like, I'm not trying to like die. And I think there's some weird people yeah. that like, they're like, oh, I'm going to send it. And I'm like, that's just really stupid. And not, not to say I've, there are consequences. Yeah, I have done stupid things and I've lived through the consequences of it. And I'm like lucky to be alive for certain choices I've made. But I'm like, I think I learned pretty gnarly about that. I was like, oh, I learned that was on me. Like be smarter. Like, and like you've yeah. got a really cool thing, like your pin cross offer, like do not ruin this. So I think right. because of a few choices I've made, I like was like, okay, like you've already done enough stupid ones. Like you have something on the line that you'd love and care about. Yeah. Where are we at in, for, uh, in pro soccer today? Uh, what do you mean? Like personally <laughs> like or, or like it, globally? Yeah, probably personally. Like, okay. So you've played for, for what, eight, nine years? Yeah, so I'm in my like, ninth season. Um, I would yeah. personally love to like play in the rest of this year and play next year. Um, if okay. like God opens those doors, awesome. I'll be super stoked. If he closes those doors, I'm like, he'll bring something better. Like, that's okay. Um, so okay. I'll be here in DC for like two months or so, play, being a available to play for them. And then depending on how that goes, I'll either potentially keep training and, and go and play here, play somewhere else, or I'll go home to California, move back to Newport. And I'm like building a business right now. What I'm really, that I'm really stoked on that, like will help younger athletes get clear on their athletic vision. And then like, systematically like each day use it for about five minutes this tool that will help them like set goals and then like reflect on them like every day and then like there'll be like a weekly live zoom call with pro athletes to like discuss hey like this is what i've done what who told you to do xyz let's help you like but kind of like what i noticed is as a pro athlete and like even playing at high levels growing up was like there's always like a lot of different opinions of what's the right way to to get to be the best you can at your sport and i was like why don't we just talk to the pros who are actually doing it and let's talk to like random people who claim they have like the right idea. And I'm like, but if you didn't do it, you don't have the right idea in my opinion. So like, I think that would be a really cool like thing. Like if I was a kid and I'm like, Hey mom, I want to do this thing. Once a week where I talk to the best girl soccer player, she'd be like, great, go for it. Like I'll support whatever I can. And then the third part of it's like a kind of like a, a, a mental reprogramming aspect of it that uses like some quantum physics and like auditory processing like at night. Wow. Okay. Do you have a name for this yet? Or uh, yeah, it's kind of top secret still. It, uh, it, it'll be probably like ready in a couple months, but it's called Swaz Athlete, and so it's like basically the most like play with confidence, so like playing with freedom and joy of whatever sport you do, and that would be like individual or team sport. But regardless, it's like for you to be able to be in a headspace and like spend the time consistently. Like if you can elongate your time of flow state, you're going to perform better. And then like how do you do that? Learn about yourself. Learn about like your kind of like resting energy state what you need to be to perform well if it's too high or too like just like learning a lot about yourself and like optimizing that and like helping athletes get to their potential because like not everyone's like good enough to play at the highest level but everybody's capable of getting to their high potential and a lot of people don't ever get there and that translates to just being an athlete or can it translate to work and translate it to could translate to everything. living life yeah, it could translate to everything yeah. but the way that i've designed the tool specifically for athletes because i'm like uh, that's what I mean, where I'm like, I feel like I have expertise there. Like I know what I'm talking about there. Yes, you or are like sports and or for business and other things. I'm like, I've done some stuff, but like not at a place where I would be like, let me teach you something like sports wise. I'm like, Oh, I get this. I know it really, really well. I can help you a lot and kind of save you a lot of time. We're like, also as an athlete, I've been like, okay, I want somebody to like guide me. I'm like, if I should be doing more strength or speed or decision-making or skill work, like what is actually most important? How do you prioritize? Cause like you're limited with the amount of hours you can train a day on your body. And even like, like just under if you're doing surfing for this, it's like, how much time should I like spend watching film? How should I watch film? Like, what does it, how does it affect me? How much should I study the specific break I'm at? Like if we're trying to be the best to compete, like you can get really nitty gritty into the details and then like kind of like build it out, like go into the details and then like run it back to the macro picture and be like, what mattered most? And I feel like, by having pro athletes be the ones mentoring these younger athletes, they'll be able to be like, that's not important right now. That's important at this age where you're at, what your goals are, like kind of like advise you. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the question I had with this. What age bracket are you looking for high for school. this athlete? High like school. 14 like that's yeah. like, I'm like, like, this is the time that matters. Like you can commit to it or you cannot, but like having the right advice then like will all honestly determine a lot. Like if you get injured or not, like mm -hmm. how you approach things, how you perform. Cause a lot of also kids like don't really have a great family. So then they're not taught emotional control or management where like, if you can't manage your, like there's just a lot of things about sport that like, Oh yeah. We can help, but like, 
there's not many athletes. I don't know. I haven't seen anything like what I'm trying to do. So I'm super stoked about it. The goal would be to get like cool. in the market of like all high school athletes in America, which is like kind of a big goal, but like, Hey, that, that means you have a good business if you're getting 1% of the market. So you said America is, could this be translated in other cultures? Yeah, definitely. Or would it be differently? It definitely could different. be useful other cultures, but I'm just like, again, like I'm starting you know something America. American, like, let's just like yeah. go into the market that I know and understand. Yes. Again, I really probably mostly understand the sports I have played, but I do think with the background that I have and like my friends in other sports that are professional, like long term would be really cool to be like, okay, I have like one of my friends that runs women's soccer side and talks to the girls, one that runs men's soccer, one that's in like the NBA, one's in the WNBA, one's in the NFL, one's in the MLB, one's in the soccer mm-hmm. league. So like have friends in all these pro sports. Hey, I'll be on the weekly live Zoom calls and like you can have like mentoring slash teaching of like it's live q a ask this professional athlete whatever you want they are in the sport you want to be in in the future wow that'd be cool so that's kind of like what i would love to so it's almost like an education system for athletes yes yes and it's it'll definitely like grow and change and about evolve but like that's like the goal today what i've learned about about you and elizabeth is you're very um athlete centric do you think that let's go back to surfing that there's two aspects of it. There's an athletic side and there's this, um, more of, um, I don't know, a fun side, I guess, um, where it doesn't have to be so yeah, serious. I think surfing is like, you can approach it as like, I want to go be like the best in the world at it. Well, I actually think it ends up blunting, but I think the most fun competing or just for fun is like when you're like right in the pocket and your turns are like, it's everything's at the right time. So like yeah. almost when you get better, it's to, in theory more fun. Cause you're actually just surfing better and like surfing well is yeah. the most fun thing to do period. I think it ends up becoming one of the same. And like how I've like enjoyed soccer for nine years is being yeah. like, what is the part of it? Like here I can do all this kind of theory structure. Like here's the t- X's and O's in math. We met, we wrote it all out. Great shelf it mm-hmm. every day. You need to show up and like play with freedom and joy. So like mm-hmm. when I'm at training, it's like, cool. Like oh, today I want to work on all my like left foot outside the foot touches. And like every time we need to pass, it's like, okay, let's make it, get our technique better. Let's like work on this. Or it's like, Hey, when I'm competing, like my goal is to do like three turns in this part of the field it, based on like the team planning for the training that day. So like, it's kind of like setting like micro goals, which is a big thing of the, the tool there, but like something that I can control and I have like like autonomy over it. and also like that when you do the simple things repetitively like that's like really fun like i enjoy that and i think mm-hmm. people that like i think then when you're saying like when is it like fun like for soccer like a part that's like really fun is when you like combination with your teammates really well which only yeah. works if you're like want to play together some players can play very like individually which like kind of like doesn't help the team very much but sometimes you need right. that so like soccer like my favorite plays are like when it's like one or two three part four passes between two or three people at the right timing and then you bring in the defense so you're kind of like just like toying with like it's kind of like really competitive and you're joking around so it's more like that like jovial like lightheartedness but like it's also the best just like one of the best moments of the game and like okay. surfing again it's like cool like riding the wave really well and like being in a flow state and just like feeling the feeling you feel when you're riding a wave well is like probably the best feeling and the similar to soccer where it's like when you have a really a common place or you've read the situation perfectly and everything happened at the right time wow you enjoy any other sports or anything what other hobbies do you have um, are you just so i would say i love i love i know i would say i love a lot of other sports and a lot of other things outside of Honestly, I love a lot of things outside of sport at all. Like I would love to yeah. one day like have a garden and have like property and like ranch and like have a well or like a river and like be self-sustaining. I would love to like build and sell tech companies. Like I like a lot of different things. So like yeah. I would just say, but I'm also very aware that like a team professional sport is like a very finite window of time to do that. So like go do it and do the best you can at it. And then when like God closes that door, then it's time for maybe one of the other many things you're like, and he'll make it clear which one. Well, yeah. So you've traveled all over the world. You've been all over the world. Where would the the prime spot for you to get life when you when you stop like having to travel? Oh, I definitely want to move home. Like you stay in Newport Beach, California would be the ideal. Like I forever. I mean, the, that's the other thing I go. I'm like, mom, dad, you ruined me. I've traveled the world, <laughs> and now I need to make ten million dollars minimum to like buy a house. Oh, yeah, like, sick. But like, I'm like, fine. I'll find a way. Like, I don't. Like, I don't really like. I'm a big fan of like figure out what you actually want and then find a way to get there versus what mm-hmm. like get like, like, I think it's, I think it's way better to like, I don't know if it's called inverse thinking, but it's like, what is like the worst case scenario or best case scenario. And then like now design how to like stay away from the worst and go to the best versus like staying really mediocre and playing it safe. Like I think that's just like a depressing way to live. And most people are not very stoked. 
for that reason. That's that's a very valid. Yeah, that's very good. Because I think most people are stay in the middle, and stay they safe. Like, want to be like they think it's safe, but I'm like that's the least safe place. Y'all are the, kind of you're kind of right. You're all the first. Never ones, you're the it. first ones fired. Like it's not a good situation to be in. <laughs> wow. Um, I do think that the most important thing anybody can do is like figure out what they actually believe about things and like be honest with themselves and like what is true and like seek that out. And I would highly encourage everybody to like figure out what you believe about Jesus. Cause I think that answer for yourself will make a huge difference in everything about your life. Okay. Um, and for me, my like favorite, the reason that I, one reason that I really love like following Jesus is that like, he talks it like a lot of people think like, Oh, the Bible of Jesus religion is very like, like constricting and not fun and like oppressive. Where like, if you actually read through and like what Jesus did and how he lived, it's like the most freeing and fulfilling life. And like, he asks us like, he's like, what did he say? The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you can have life and have life abundantly. Where he's like, he wants us to live fully, not like playing it safe and like sitting on the sidelines. And I'm like, why does nobody else talk about that? Like everyone wants to have this great life. And I'm like, well, Jesus, if in fact God did make you and he did give you the Bible, like check it out because it'll probably point you to the right direction where you should go. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. This is Mike and Elizabeth Eddy, and we're out of here. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Life has its twists, has its turns. Life's many months, many seasons. Time flows at one pace, it don't change. Such beauty in being alive on earth. And every little thing on this planet has such worth. For it's with the simple things in life. Whoa, simple things in life, they make me smile. Simple things in life. Simple things in life, they make me smile. Sun comes up in the morning. Birds, how they sing, well, it's dawning. Sun, it casts a warm shadow around me. I look to the sky and tears well in my eyes. For does that human race? Only no one pace Is life an overpass, underpass, six-lane highway An overpass, underpass, six-lane highway A cellular technology runs our life For it's with the simple things in life Whoa, simple things in life They make me smile things in life, simple things in life, they make me smile.
Hey you guys, Endless Summer box set. This thing is legit. It's authentic, numbered certificate in it. It has a five frame film strip from the original print. You will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.